students last class we have seen the chemistry and mechanism of action of macrolides this class will see the clinically used macrolides they are erythromycin clarithromycin and azithromycin we'll see one by one first we'll see erythromycin so now we'll see the source of that so in 1952 it was identified from saccharopolyspora erythrea actually that was formerly called as strepto streptomyces erythreus now we'll see the structure of this erythromycin already we have seen macrolides are having three parts one is a large macrocyclic lactone ring another one is a ketone ketone group next one is glycosidically linked amino sugars so look at the structure of that lactone ring so it is a 1 to 14 so numbering starting from this ketone so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 so it is the 14 membered lactone ring and it is having where the methyl methyl, methyl groups or here second fourth sixth eighth tenth twelfth so it is having six methyl groups six methyl groups in second uh, second to 12th so 2 4 6 8 10 12 so having three methyl groups and it is having ketone groups in first and ninth position so two ketones at first and ninth and having hydroxy groups in six three hydroxy groups one at six another at 11 and last at 12th so three hydroxy groups at 6 11 12 and only one ethyl group at 13th position and the ketone i mean that lactone oxygen no, that is present in 14th position so that is the structure of that lactone ring okay now here in third portion it is have it is linked with uh, sugar that can be called as l cladinose by means of that glycosidic linkage and in fifth portion it is also having another sugar that is called as d desosamine by means of a glycosidic linkage already we said it is having two sugars most of them are having cladinose and desosamine already we have seen this cladinose no that is a neutral sugar whereas this desosamine no that is an amino sugar because of the presence of this dimethyl amino group now we will see the um, uh, chemical name of that cladinose. So for the cladinose the parent would be ribohexose, L ribohexose for that already we have known the structure for ribose that is the sugar. So no, um, that is a 5 membered heterocyclic ring that is having oxygen as the heteroatom and having 3 hydroxy groups and 1 hydroxy methyl group. So that is the structure of ribose. Now see the structure of ribohexose. So same as that of that it is a 5 membered one but this is a 6 membered one here it is having three hydroxy groups and one hydroxy methyl whereas it is having four hydroxy groups and one hydroxy methyl group so that is about ribohexose so this one is l ribohexose so now compare this one with this cladinose l cladinose okay so here four portions it is have four portions it is having that hydroxy group only one hydroxy methyl now here it is having that hydroxy group so second it is not having hydroxy group and third it is not having hydroxy group that is replaced by means of methoxy and methyl groups and in sixth portion it is not having hydroxy only hydrogen is present here okay so CH2OH it is, uh, is not there it is having only CH3 so where uh, the hydroxy groups are replaced here second third and sixth that is why it is called 2 3 6 tri deoxy and third portion it is having methoxy and methyl so 3 methoxy methyl and what is the parent one L ribohexo so what is the chemical name of cladinose 2 3 C uh, sorry 2 3 6 tri deoxy 3 methoxy 3 methyl L ribohexose now come to the structure of this D desosamine so for the desosamine actually what is the parent for L cladinose that is L ribohexose now see the structure of D desosamine now for the desosamine no so this is the parent what is the parent that is called xylohexose for that look at the structure of xylose that is having same structure as that of ribose already we have seen for cladinose no what is the structure for ribose same heterocyclic ring 5 membered one having oxygen as the heteroatom 3 hydroxy groups and 1 hydroxy methyl that is for um, same for xylose and also for ribose only one difference so what is the difference here in third portion in third portion it is uh, these two are having hydroxy group so for the case of ribose the hydroxy group attached in third portion no that is having alpha configuration whereas for xylose that is beta configuration so that is the only one difference that is why the ribose and xylose no that two are called epimers 
now come to xylohexose. So, same as that of xylose, this one is a 5 membered one, this one is a 6 membered one. So, it is having 4 hydroxy groups and 1 hydroxy methyl group. So, what is the difference between xylohexose and uh, ribohexose? Both are having similar structure, they differ only in configuration. So, that one is having alpha configuration in third position, this one is having beta configuration in third position, that is all. So, um, what they are ribose and xylose, these two are called epimers. Similarly, ribohexose and xylohexose, these two are epimers. What are epimers? Already we have seen. So, epimers are isomers, they differ only in configuration here. These two know they differ only in configuration at C3, whereas it is ribose or uh, ribohexose that is having um, alpha configuration in third position, xylose or um, xylohexose that is having beta configuration in third position. Now, see the structure of look at the structure of this D desose. I mean, compare this one with the xylohexose. While comparing with xylohexose, uh, look at the third portion. Third portion xylohexose is having hydroxy group. Here it is not having that. That is replaced by means of this hydroxy methyl group. And fourth portion it is not having hydroxy group. And sixth portion it is not having hydroxy group. That is why it is chemically called 3, 4, 6. So, 3, 4, 6 trideoxy and 3 dimethyl amino um, D xylohexo. So, that is the chemical name of D desosamine. Erythromycin no, so that is available as erythromycin A. Actually, there may be four forms of erythromycin. They are erythromycin A, B, C, D. Okay. So, here already we have seen the structure. No, that is the structure of erythromycin A. Here we have to consider only two positions. They differ only in two positions. Here in 12th position, it is having hydroxy group that is considered as R1. And here we have a sugar called L cladinose. No, in the third position, that is having methoxy group. No, so the third one, this part that can be considered as R2. So, here we have in the case of R1, we have hydroxy group, and in R2, we have methoxy means that can be called erythromycin A. So, erythromycin B is 12th position it is not having hydroxy only hydrogen and same in uh, R2 position that is methoxy that is called erythromycin B. Now, um, see the structure for erythromycin C. So, in R1 we have hydroxy and R2 we have hydroxy group means that can be called erythromycin C. What is for D? In R1 we have hydrogen and R2 we have hydroxy group means that is called D. Here in the case of um, uh, erythromycin A and B, here we have two sugars, they are called L cladinose and D desosamine. Whereas for erythromycin C and D, we are not having cladinose that is replaced by means of L micorose. So, what are the two sugars present in erythromycin C and D? One is L micorose, another one is D desosamine. So, what is the difference between erythromycin A and B? Erythromycin A is having hydroxy group in 12th position, whereas erythromycin B is, is not having hydroxy group in 12th position. So, that hydroxy group is remo uh, replaced by means of hydrogen. Already we have seen uh, erythromycin no, that is having two sugars, one is uh, cladinose, another one is desosamine, that cladinose is a neutral sugar, whereas desosamine uh, no, that is a um, amino sugar, so that is having basic character. So, because of the presence of the dimethyl amino group, it is basic and it forms salts with acids. Already we have seen the difference between erythromycin A and B. So, A is having hydroxy group in 12th position whereas this is not present in B. So, that is having only hydrogen. So, because of the removal of that oxy group that is oxygen it is acid stable. Actually, this erythromycin no, that is very bitter taste and to overcome the bitterness and irregular oral administration, they are available as entry coated tablets, entry coated forms and also in delayed release dosage forms. Now, we will see the modified derivatives of erythromycin. Already we have seen that desosamine no, desosamine is having dimethyl amino group in third position. So, that forms salts with acids. So, we are getting three, um, three salts by means of acids. What are the three salts? One is glucoheptonate, otherwise a glucipate, another one is lactobionate, third one is tearate. So, how we are getting that um, glucoheptonate or glucipate erythromycin is combined with d glycero d glucoheptonoic acid by combining Combining with that, we are getting the salt that can be called as erythromycin glucoheptonate or erythromycin glucipate that is given only by IV that is used for the treatment of legionase disease when oral administration is not possible. 
Second one is lactobionate. So, how we are getting lactobionate? Erythromycin is treated with lactobionic acid. So, we are getting salt that is called erythromycin lactobionate. Actually, this lactobionic acid, no, that is a disaccharide. How we are getting the lactobionic acid that is formed from reaction with the gluconic acid with galactose. And third one is stearate salt that is by treating erythro erythromycin with stearic acid. This lactobionate, no, that is given by IV. So, here we have seen salts of acids. Next one is esters we are getting. How we are getting esters? This desosomene is having hydroxy group in second position. So, that hydroxy group is converted into ester by treating with some acids. So, what, uh, what are they? One is ethyl succinic acid. So, by treating with ethyl succinic acid, we are getting ethyl succinate ester. Another one is by treating with propionic acid, we are getting propionate. So, that is available as a lauryl sulfate salt and that can be called as estolate, erythromycin estolate. Here, totally, so we are getting 5 um, uh, five forms of erythromycin one is uh, glucosate lactobionate stearate ethyl succinate propionate so five forms of erythromycin are available in that the first two no glucosate and lactobionate they are used only for iv whereas the three no uh, last three that is stearate ethyl succinate and um, this estolate these are used in oral dosage forms now we'll see the uses of erythromycin used in the treatment of upper respiratory tract infections, soft tissue infections caused by gram positive bacteria like Streptococcus pyrogenes, Streptococcus pneumoniae and in the treatment of gonorrhea, syphilis. It is used as an alternative for patients who are allergic to penicillins. Used in the treatment of eaten agent pneumonia that is caused by mycoplasma pneumoniae. And in the treatment of bacterial enteritis that is caused by Campylobacter jejuni and in the prophylaxis of bacterial endocarditis that is caused by Streptococcus viridens and um, in, the, in mycoplasma avium complex infections in 8 patients for that it is usually given in combination with rifabutin. Next one is clarithromycin. It is having similar structure with, with erythromycin with only one difference. Here, erythromycin is having hydroxy group in 6 position. Here, it is having methyl ether. So, the hydrogen is replaced by means of methyl group and we are getting methyl ether. That is why other, other parts would be the same. That is why it is called 6-methyl uh, ether of erythromycin. So, that is the only one difference. So, um, usually erythromycin, no, because of the presence of the hydroxy group in 6 position, it forms in internal ketal okay and because of the formation of that ketal it causes gi cramping here this hydroxy group is converted to methoxy group that's why this clarithromycin does not form that ketal and um, because of the presence of that 6 methyl ether it, it is more lipophilic and it retains the antibacterial activity of the parent erythromycin and it is having increased acid stability and oral bioavailability it has greater potency against mycoplasma pneumonia, legionella pneumophila that is um, responsible for severe chest infections, chlamydia pneumonia, haemophilus influenza, morexella keterhalis. This erythromycin, no, this is um, this is active against some unusual pathogens. They are Borrelia burgo. Um, Bergdorferi that is the cause for Lyme disease and mycoplas mycobacterium avium complex. Now we will see the next one that is the last one that is called azithromycin. Look at the structure of azithromycin. This is also a semi-synthetic derivative of erythromycin. In the case of erythromycin, 9th portion we have a ketone. So, that ketone is removed and between 9th and 10th carbon of erythromycin, this um, um, methyl amino group is introduced. So, that is uh, that is the dif structural difference between erythromycin and azithromycin. So, because of the introduction of that methyl amino group, so it is converted into 15 membered one. Okay. Uh, so, what is the difference between these two? So, 9th ketone of erythromycin is removed. Between the 9th and 10th carbon of erythromycin, this methyl amino group is introduced. It is a 15 membered one. 
So, it is a semi synthetic derivative of erythromycin. How can we get azithromycin from erythromycin? First, this erythromycin, no, that is converted to 6 oxime derivative. So, then it undergoes Beckman rearrangement. What is Beckman rearrangement? Oximes are converted into N substituted amides by means of acids. Okay, then it, um, it undergoes N methylation followed by reduction of the ring expanded lactam, and finally, we are getting azithromycin. So, first, it is converted into oxime derivative and under goes Beckman rearrangement followed by N methylation and reduction and finally we are getting azithromycin. Already we have seen azelite, so it is a prototype of azelite. We have seen this point. So, it is a ring expanded analog of erythromycin. Here we and um, that is having the tertiary amine nitrogen um, that is the N methyl that is inserted between the 9th and 10th carbon and there may be removal of carbonyl that is ketone at 9th carbon. So, because of doing that the acid stability of erythromycin to acid catalyst degradation um, that is increased and also the lip, lipid solubility of the molecule um, that is increased and it does not form uh, cyclic internal ketal. Now, we will see the uses. Used in the treatment of urogenital and other sexually transmitted infections caused by Chlamydia trachomatis, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, Haemophilus ducreae, um, urea plasma, urea lyticum and in the treatment of mild ear infection, streptococcal pharyngitis otherwise called strep throat, um, pneumonia and travelers diarrhea that is all.